21 points in riding we got that battle. Wow. Also F's in chat for Liana. She served as well. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing that you're having a fantastic day. Today, I'm going to be going over my top 10 tips of things that you probably didn't know that will hopefully make your game just that little bit easier and hopefully a lot more fun and enjoyable. So without further ado, let's get into the video. These tips will be in no particular order and I will leave links to them all down in the description in case there is a particular tip that you wanted to skip to. Firstly, when converting a lord to your kingdom, make sure that you are at war with them because then they will bring their towns, villages, and castles with them. If you aren't at war with them, you will still recruit them, but all of their lands will be given to another lord from their previous kingdom. Also, try to make sure that you're recruiting them out in the field, because when negotiating the terms, you can trade items with them. Whereas if they're in a castle or a town, you can only trade money. As you saw just then, most of my conversation options were 100%. To learn how to make it so easy to recruit lords to your kingdom, please refer to my recruiting lords guide that I will link down in the description and also up above on the card at the top right of this video. You're going to need to make sure that you have enough money and enough items to actually recruit the lords. This is where smithing comes in handy and can make you rich. As you can see here, I have nowhere near enough items or money to successfully recruit this lord to my kingdom however if you follow my smithing guide you can easily have 10 million if not 20 million dinars and hordes of javelins in your inventory that will easily convert any lord to your faction again i'll leave the link to that down in the description and up above right now this will mean that you don't have this issue and you should be able to recruit any lord without any problem Another side tip here, actually. I've just thought of another one as I'm as I'm in the middle of making this video. Did you know that if you do fail a conversation skill check to have a lord join your kingdom, you can wait approximately a month, I believe it is, maybe two, and you can actually try again. Not only that, they will carry over the success that they already had from your previous conversation. My fourth tip should significantly help when escorting or following parties. If you hold down left alt before then left clicking on a party, your character will automatically follow that party at the exact same speed provided that you, your maximum running speed is higher than theirs. This will really help when following side by side with an army or such as doing a caravan escort quest. It's such a simple little trick and I don't know why it's not in the tutorial. It helps massively. This next tip should significantly help you improve the rate at which you level up your troops. As you can see here, I've got 77 Imperial recruits and 24 Sturgeon recruits. And I'm going to show you that the more units you have in a stack, the quicker they level up. Therefore, you don't want to actually upgrade a stack of units until they have all leveled up. Here's a party of 107 looters. We will auto resolve this battle. We lost around 20 units, that's fine. For this example, as you can see, 24 Imperial recruits leveled up, but only nine Sturgeon recruits. Therefore, end game, if you're trying to level up a lot of recruits very quickly, you want to wait until all of them are ready to upgrade, bulk upgrade them all at once, and rinse and repeat until they're at the maximum level. This is the most efficient way to level up your troops, and you'll find that doing so makes them level up far quicker. Here's another money-making tip for you. Once a city has recently been taken, it doesn't matter who took it or even if you were at war with the faction, just that a city has recently been taken, you can then go in and make a lot of money off selling goods to that city because they will most likely have very recently ran out of everything. So now that we've finished that battle, we will go into the city and we will trade. And as you can see, we have a few goods. Meat sells for an absolute fortune, as does cheese. Butter's also quite expensive. This city probably isn't the best example because this siege was very short-lived because they only had 50 defenders. But you'll find the longer a city is, has been besieged for, the more profitable trading with that city will become afterwards. You'll usually find that they have completely run out of food and there is very little of anything else left in the city city either so if there has been a particularly long siege try and get there as quickly as possible and you can make an absolute fortune off of them also by doing so your trade skill will increase 
I now have a few combat tips for you, which will significantly help when facing armies that are a lot stronger than you or a lot bigger than you, both in troop quality and quantity. And it all comes down to reducing their morale as quickly as possible. There are two really easy, really effective ways of reducing morale and making fights a lot easier for yourself. First and foremost, kill the leader. Kill the enemy leader as quickly as you can. This will drastically drain the troops' morale and make them fight far less efficiently. And secondly, a more sustainable way throughout the battle is headshots. Headshots with bows, crossbows, and javelins. Every headshot will decrease the morale of the enemy troops because the others will see their comrades' brains being splattered all over the floor and naturally they will dislike this and it will make them fight worse. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. And even though I died towards the end of that fight, as you can see, yes, we had a few more troops than the enemy, but most of our troops are recruits and, and very low level Imperial troops. And they broke when there was still roughly 20 troops remaining in their army because their morale was so low. Our last money-making tip, and also a way to get quite cheap food, is essentially extorting villagers. You want to wait outside of a town whilst the villagers go in and sell their goods. Just keep waiting, eventually they'll come back out again. I've missed that group unfortunately because I clicked the wrong button. When these guys exit the town, we will speak to them. And you'll see they've got lots of old workhorses that they no longer need. They sell them for 17 dinars each. There you go, 8 workhorses, 136 dinars. Job done. Now let's go into our inventory. Find the old workhorses, slaughter them all, and we'll find that we got 48 meat and 16 hides out of that. Now, bearing in mind, I could be very efficient with selling all of this, but let's not be. Let's just go to the nearest town. What was it? Did I say 136 dinars that it cost us to buy them? And we just sold the whole lot for 1,500. We increased our money 12 or 13 times then. And if you're efficient with where you sell it, you can even increase your trade skill or keep the meat. It's essentially free food. And I can sit here as long as I want and repeat this process. We'll just wait for some more villages to turn up, wait for them to sell their goods, speak to them again. Once I uh, press the right button, 14 workhorses, 238 dinars. Thank you very much. Let's slaughter them all again go to trade and there's another 2500 again more than 10 times my money back or keep all the food basically free food this next tip is about using terrain to your advantage in battle for those of you that don't know the terrain that you are on in the campaign map directly correlates to the terrain you'll be fighting on when you go into battle it will be hard to demonstrate this in action but if i explain to you the theory and then you can put this into practice when the situation or the need arises Say if this person had a particularly horse-heavy army and they were stronger than me. If I fight them out in the open, I'm dead. I'm going to lose. However, if it's quite a mountainous region or in the forest, I stand a chance. Therefore, if I try and attack this person in the forest, when we go into battle, you'll see it's completely wooded. It's full of trees. So if I was against a particularly cavalry-heavy army, I would position all my troops over here somewhere and force the cavalry to run at me in between all these trees and suddenly the fact that they're on horses means nothing anymore and we stand a much better chance than we would if we were fighting out in the open. Equally, if you've got the horse-heavy army, then you want to make sure that you are fighting out in the open so you can lead armies out into the open or chase them out into the open if you have the stronger party to give yourself favourable battle terrain to fight on. Yeah! It's something you always want to keep in mind and you always want to make sure that you're fighting on favourable terrains to help improve your chances in battle. Here's bonus tip number 12 for you. Getting crazy skillful headshots in battle massively increases your riding skill. I think that just went up about 15 points in less than that many arrows. That's insane. Take that one away, everyone. 21 points in riding we got that battle. Wow. Also F's in chat for Liana. She served as well.
And my final tip is to make sure that you focus your skill tree. You don't want to try and spread yourself too thin and learn every single skill. Just in case you didn't know, the higher your level is and the more you level up skills, the slower your learning rate becomes. At the start of the game, this learning rate right here was roughly times six. It's now gone right down to times 0.5. So any skills that you think won't benefit you far into your campaign completely completely ignore them or you will spread yourself too thin and you will level up too slowly so you ideally want to pick one melee weapon one ranged weapon and just focus on them and then have a look at these skills and carefully think what you will want to use late into your campaign a lot of people i know don't bother with a scout and they level scouting up themselves i like to leave this so that i can focus on something else and i will specifically assign a scouting companion in my party same with medicine and same with engineering you can even do the same with a quartermaster who requires the trade skill your brother is a really good example of a quartermaster i personally like leveling up trade so i will do this one myself but again you can ignore trade and you can focus more in tactics or in athletics just make sure that you aren't putting points into everything or it just won't be feasible and that is it there are my 10 well more like 12 tips for how to just become an absolute god at this game i really really hope you learned at least something today please let me know if you did i'm really interested what tips people already knew what tips people didn't know and more importantly what tips people will actually take away and implement into their game and let me know down in the comments if you have any more that i didn't know about it's um the banner lord community is incredible at sharing knowledge and it's it's one of the reasons that this is probably my favorite game at the moment so yeah please let me know how i did and hopefully i'll see you again soon you're all amazing have a domtastic day and i'll see you again soon bye bye